we um have to learn how to show up for each other yeah you know and, and when you start talking about being understood i have to be able to say you know what if you like to drink and smoke i'm okay with you drinking and smoking i'm not gonna try to change you if you quiet and you're an introvert and you don't want to talk i'm not gonna tell you take this microphone mm -hmm. you know i'm loud so don't ask me to dim my light or be quiet I need to be understood means you understand me, but you don't try to change me. Right. You know what I mean? You don't try to make me into something that's going to be contrary to what, what what my gifts are. Don't ask me to be quiet if I'm a talker. Don't ask me to talk if, I, if I'm an introvert. Don't ask me to go into a room if I have social anxiety and I don't really like people. Yeah. You know, we have to understand each other so that we can be adders and, 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 and multipliers instead of subtractors and dividers. Yeah. Welcome to Being Understood, a podcast where we explore what it means to be understood today and talk to communicators who are responsible to do that. I am welcomed by my co-host, Beth. Hi, Beth. Hey, Liz. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. And today's a big day for us because we have our friend Shaletta on yes! board with us. Hey, ladies. Hey, yes. So we are trying to figure out how to introduce you because you do so many things. You're a host. You're a mom. You're an advocate. You're an author. Um, and Podcast. Media owner yeah. i told you no introduction boss lady just say <laughs> boss lady just say boss lady and that just like sums up everything and also a cover model though cover hello model. hello yeah. i know leo is going to um edit this in later for the podcast <laughs> but i was told today that i am on the cover of twin cities business magazine congratulations oh, i'm so excited i'm just like over the moon and i'm so excited to talk to you ladies about it because when i started my company shaletta makes me laugh.com four years ago i had four kids recently divorced mm -hmm. right uh three of my kids are severely autistic and i have minus eleven dollars oh my goodness. i was on food stamps i was i was on food stamps and i stepped out on faith mm -hmm. i bet on me and i believed in me um i was at a job and i kept getting passed over for promotions and i was like why is it nothing against the white guys we love you leo why <laughs> is it that you are willing to hire somebody um who has less experience than me take a chance on me and they were like no you know we just we're gonna take a chance on this guy and i was like you know what if nobody else is taking a chance on me I'm going to take a chance on me. And so that's what I did. And I started this company and I didn't know nothing about running a business. Yeah. All I knew was that I had a passion and some talent and fire in my belly. And girl, here we are four years later, the cover of Twin Cities Business that Magazine. Are you kidding me? <laughs> are you kidding me? But that's just a testament to women. Yes. You know, we have more opportunities now than we've ever had. And I, I think I read somewhere recently that black women are starting more businesses than any other sector in wow. the country. And so a lot of us as women are walking off these jobs where we're being paid pennies on the dollar for our talents, where we're not being recognized and saying, you know what, instead of giving you all my brain matter, I'm going to take all my brain matter and all the money to the house and I'm going to start my own company. And, and when we see other women doing this successfully, that gives us the courage we need. Think about our parents. What could they have done if they had the opportunities we had? They didn't even have washing machines. They didn't have iPads for the kids. Right. They didn't have microwaves. They didn't have McDonald's drive through You went to McDonald's once a year or if you made straight A's. We, we in the Raising right, Cane's right. line. <laughs> right? Girl, we in the Raising Cane's line now every day. Okay? Just because I don't have time to cook. I try I hear you. to live at your house. Okay, girl. <laughs> I'm asked all the right? time. <laughs> but, but, you know, and, and think about what they could have done. Because mm -hmm. they were just as smart. They were just as brilliant. Yeah, they were absolutely. just as amazing. They were just as creative. But they didn't have those avenues. And... They didn't see other women doing. That's why I live my life out loud. I'm so glad we're talking about being understood and, and being loud and being bold. Because when you start telling your story and people start seeing themselves in, in some aspect of you and who you are, they're like, well, you know what? If she could do it, I could do it. I got some special needs kids. Yeah. If she could do it, I could do it. I just got divorced. If she did it, I could do it. I'm on food stamps. I, I, if she believed in herself, I can believe in me. But we don't do that as women enough mm -hmm. so that we keep seeing the cycle of success. You know. We too busy stargazing. Yeah. We too busy looking at Oprah, thinking Oprah's so special. Oprah's so special. It's a million damn Oprahs out there. But we're so busy stargazing at her that we don't think we're as special. And so what I try to do every time I'm out, 
every time somebody gives me a microphone or a stage, I try to encourage and uplift women because we are just as special as Oprah. We are just as amazing as anyone else. And we have what we need. We're complete. We don't need another damn degree. We don't need another certification. We don't need another class. We don't need another workshop. We need to just do it. Mm -hmm. I wish that I could have a whole audience going. (laughs) (laughs) The podcast's over. We're done. Right. Let's go home. Mic drop. (laughs) Can we drop these mics on the floor, Leo? Can we do that? (laughs) (laughs) I think that that's really important for every woman to hear because mm-hmm. oftentimes I think we're the thing that gets in the way oh, of every time. the starting every time. and saying, why wouldn't I try it? Why, mm-hmm. why couldn't I try that and do it? I mean, starting your own media company definitely is a risk, but also something that you have shown your capacity to do mm-hmm. so successfully. Um, now talk about the early days, how much of that was about just keep doing and how yeah. much of it was like I have this vision and I know exactly where I'm going um it was faith it, you know it's a faith walk I'm a I'm a strong believer uh I'm a good Christian woman I drink vodka at night but you know I go to church on Sunday <laughs> who doesn't right <laughs> right and and I just had God some God says that right he said yeah. he drank wine he turned water yeah. into wine girl yeah. good with it. Yes. uh but I just I just had faith not only in me but in God to just provide for me I was like God you are not gonna put me out here with these three special needs kids and a teenager which might be worse than having special needs kids to leave me to drop me off at the homeless shelter I know you're gonna really provide for me so I'm gonna operate I always operated as if I already had it yeah that's the thing I always operated as if I already had it so when we launched the podcast network February 1st 2020 it was me and six other people black professionals, um, subject experts right here in the Twin Cities. We had a suite at the Crown Plaza. I had food in there and we were going through designs and we were coming up with stories. And and somebody said, did you get a grant or something? I thought you said you want food stamps. You didn't have any money. And I was like, I didn't get a grant. I don't have a dime, but I'm operating on faith. I'm going to walk on water and just trust God to meet me where I am. And and so I've always walked on water. I've always just believed that if I put one foot in front of the other, if I make one step, God's going to make two. And I I just know that consistency is key. You know what I mean? We're Mm -hmm. sitting here because she was consistent. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? She didn't stop. You know, things are going to happen. Folks are going to let you down. You're going to get heartbroken. The kids are going to act a fool. The husband going to act a fool. The school going to act a fool. Your neighbor going to act a fool. But if you don't let any of that stop you, it's just a distraction. My pastor calls it static. Yeah. He tells me all the time, stop listening to the static. Just keep going. We in this room talking on these microphones in this beautiful office because she didn't stop. Mm-hmm. There's too many ideas, too many great concepts that we take right to the grave. Books podcasts uh lines of product that die on the phone with our girlfriend or die on the kitchen table or die in the bed when we tell them to our husbands because for whatever reason we don't believe that we are worthy enough to pull this off and i just believe if god gives me an idea girl he has confidence and trust and faith in me and i'm going to see that thing all the way through mm-hmm. yeah so Going back in time, just real quick here. So the path that you're on now, the career that you have for yourself was not Mm -mm. the career that you envisioned when you were Mm -mm. first starting out as an adult. So tell us about that and tell us how you went this direction. I was seven years old um, and I was at an event at a, a, a this was so crazy. This is the craziest story ever. When I tell it to people, we laugh. But when I was seven years old, mother used to go to a club and they had a Christmas party for the club goers' kids, Mm -hmm. right? And so they had Santa and Santa came on a helicopter. This is the craziest story. (laughs) If it wasn't true, we wouldn't be laughing. So everybody who goes to this club, the club was called the French Connection. Their kids came for this Christmas party on a Saturday morning. And so that's customer service, ain't it, girl? And so Santa came off of this helicopter and he went in there and and he was talking to the kids and giving away gifts but the radio station was there yeah. right and so Doc Kilgore was there and he was just like the best DJ ever you know back in the day when all we had was radio we didn't have all these other things competing for our time we just sit and listen yeah. to the radio yeah. you know and so he said uh, I'm gonna get a couple of kids to come up and say their names and and, and what school they go to what grade they're in and girl was like hundreds of kids and then he picked me 
And he put those headphones on me. And I got on that microphone and I said my name and I heard mm-hmm. myself. Yeah. And I was like, this is it. This is what I want to do. But here's the thing. Um, as black women and women in general, at the time, we weren't on the radio. Yeah. I mean, we still struggle for, for spots now, yeah. right? But imagine back in 70-something. Um, there were no women on the radio for us to look up to, for us to see and, and think I can be that as well. So my gift was always talking. Yeah, That's my gift. And I tell kids all the time when I'm in schools or even girlfriends who kind of still trying to find their way, what is your gift? Your gift is not your profession. Your gift is the thing that you do the best with the least amount of effort. We were laughing because we were like, how long is the podcast? And Leo was like an hour and 45 minutes. I was like, what? Okay. It was <laughs> in a shock because I could talk for an hour and 45 minutes because that's my gift. Yeah. I love to talk. So I ask ladies all the time, what's your gift? You, We should find a profession in that gift so that we are always operating in our gift. And, and, and that way we'll always, people say you always win. You're always successful because I'm operating in my gift yeah. because I'm always talking. But because there was nothing shown to me or nothing presented to me or nothing available where I could use that gift. I went to nursing school. What in the hell am I doing <laughs> in nursing school? I don't want to wipe my own butt. Okay, ladies. <laughs> I'm trying to pick which one of my kids is going to do it for yeah. me in a couple of years. Yeah. And All the power to the nurses. <laughs> baby! Right? No kidding. Look, baby, when but they go on strike, I'm striking with them. Yeah. Get them back in here. Pay them what they want. I do not want to wipe my own butt. Um, and so I went to nursing school. And when it came time to start wiping butts, I just, I was like, I quit. Yeah. I want to wipe butts. <laughs> and I said, I got you know those pivotal moments. <laughs> right. like, is that a butt? Yeah. Um, no, I don't want to wipe that butt. Um, and so I saw... Linda Laurel from Channel 2 do a speech at a convocation. And she was an anchor at Houston, Mm -hmm. NBC station. And I was like, okay, that's it. But I had to see it. You know what I mean? I had to see that. And when I saw that, I I changed my major and I went to a new school and I signed up for communications. And so that's the only job that I've ever had. Radio and TV. And I would have actually been satisfied had they given me the job. I said, the next book I write is going to be called They Should Have Just Gave Me the Damn Job. <laughs> because had I taken that job, I would have made that little stinky $75,000. I would have been happy doing the work that I'm doing. You know, uh, good morning. Welcome to Minneapolis. And it's Shaletta. It's 8.53. It's going to be cold today because it's Minneapolis. And we're celebrating Prince's birthday. Whatever it is, right? I would have been happy to sit in that chair and do that job. But they didn't give me the job. Yeah. So I had a choice. Either they can determine what my worth and value is or I could. That's scary, ladies. Yeah. That's is. very frightening right. because women, we don't even know what we worth. Yeah. We have to decide what are we worth? What are we worth? And then we have to make that known to the point that other people know we worth something too. You know, I, I do some um teaching at the University of Minnesota mm-hmm. in the Hubbard School of Broadcasting, right? And so um, one class was uh, all the kids, students had to come up with ideas for a podcast. It's a podcast yeah, class because all the kids want a podcast yeah. now because they think because we do it and we success. Right, they can do right. it too. Right, okay. So podcast and class. And so I noticed that the guys would just step up to the plate and they had the dumbest ideas, yeah. but they were confident. Yep. They were like, so I have this idea for a podcast uh, to talk about books and all kinds of books. And I'm like, who going to sit and listen to you? Sit down. That's dumb. I tell them, I don't, I'm not your parent. I don't have to like you. Yeah. Sit down. That's dumb. And the ladies, the young ladies in the class, y'all, they had the best ideas. Wow. But the delivery was off. They yeah. were not confident. This one young lady, she got up and she said, well, I, um, I, I do a lot of journaling and I, I don't know, maybe it's, you know, it's really a lot of, you know what? I don't even want to go. Let somebody else go. I'm like, no, come on, let's, let's work through this. And so we're talking and she just had this best idea about journaling. And I said, you know what? You got a million dollar idea mm-hmm. because not only do you have a podcast, you have product, you create journals. You can go to all these conferences and sell your journals. You can put them online. People are going to buy your journals. You have several different streams of revenue coming in off this podcast. But because she was not confident, she wasn't even ready to tell us. So, you know, what we did. We stopped the whole class. Yeah. And we just had a lesson on confidence. We have to teach our young ladies. And this women's March is Women's History Month. Mm-hmm. We have to teach young ladies and, and us, too how to be confident and know your worth because you don't have to have a degree to be worth something right you don't have to have a business to be worth something these young ladies in college still trying to figure it out 
are worth something. But only they know. I can't, I can't tell them that. Yeah. I can't tell you your worth. You can't tell me mine. I tell you, this is what I'm worth. And if you can pay the price, pay the price. If you can't yeah. pay the price, then that's fine. We can still be cool. Yeah. I just ain't gonna do your event. I just ain't gonna work with you. But but this is my this is what I know that I'm worth. And then stand on that and then don't back down from that. And then be confident in that. We yeah. have to start doing that more. Absolutely. You know, as you're talking with us, I think often about those things that we wanted in our career traje- trajectory that then later we can look back and be like, I'm glad that didn't Oh, Jesus, you know? yes. <laughs> I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing right yeah, now yeah. if I had had that opportunity, which seemed good at the time. At the time. But look mm-hmm. at where I am now. You have the best story in that of... Uh, well, I mean, I know it hasn't come without a lot of hard work, but but that's anything. I would have been working it, working for them. There's some pretty pivotal moments mm-hmm. for you that have led you to this place, um, and and that's exciting and something that you yeah. celebrate, which is one of my favorite things about you is how you celebrate um, where you are and how it affects other people. But um, those pivotal moments are really meaningful and do you celebrate them or yeah I, I try to as much as possible like when we got the magazine cover with uh, <laughs> Twin Cities Business Magazine I was calling Clear Channel uh, Outdoors like hey uh, I need about five digital billboards <laughs> and here's the graphic and let me know yeah. how much this is going to cost and let's put this up mm-hmm. right because um, we we are in my house uh, and in my life Katherine Johnson is not a noun Katherine Johnson is a verb. Katherine Johnson is the brilliant black NASA scientist yeah. who single-handedly saved the Apollo 13 space mission, right? But it took 47 years for the movie Hidden Figures to come out. Yeah. So, girl, wait a minute. I need y'all to think about something. In 47 years, not a boss, a co-worker, a supervisor, historian, nobody gave this woman a medal, a plaque, wow. a statue, a trophy, a ribbon, a certificate of participation. She just saved this these people, saved this spaceship, and went back to doing her job. And all those men around her and everybody else, the whole system, it's a system. Yeah. Never recognized her, never did anything. We had to wait for the movie Hidden Figures to come out. And by the time she started getting the Medal of Freedom and all these awards and the statues and the plaques, she had one foot on the grave and one foot on the banana peel. She was 98 years old. Why didn't somebody celebrate her in real time? Yeah. They should have. But we are taught to um, not uh, brag. Stop. Don't show. My mom yeah. tell me all the time, stop showing out. That's what I do. <laughs> Leo, I shows out. Okay. I show out. I'm going to get the billboard. I'm going to yell. I'm going to scream. I'm going to go into the room and suck up all the fame. If you want to be famous in a room and you walk in and you see me there, walk out. Because that's my room. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. I, have already, and, and I, I have already made all the people fall in love with me. I'm going to be the loudest one. I'm going to be the coolest one. If you want to be famous and you walk in the room, you're going to be like, damn, she'll let us here. This is not. <laughs> I got to find another room. I'll come back another day. We have to start just being bigger. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. We have to start letting everybody know how awesome we are. So I tell people all the time, you don't get to Katherine Johnson me. You're not going to let me be amazing and then wait for you to tell me I'm amazing. I'm going to tell you how amazing I am. So I don't want to wait for somebody else to get the billboard. Girl, the magazine don't even come out to April. I called to get the billboard today yeah. to tell people available in April so they'll be looking for it, yeah. right? When when we do something, and, and I think with last year, two years ago, I got like USA Today, Woman of the Year for Minnesota. Girl, mm-hmm. the people call and I just took out the billboards. You know, I'm calling all the media like, do y'all want to do a story on me? Because I just got USA Today, right, right. Uh, Woman of the Year for the state of Minnesota and I just want to make sure, do y'all, do y'all need an interview yeah. or something? Because yeah. I need everybody to know how awesome I am. So I'm not going to wait. You don't get to Katherine Johnson me. I'm not going to be dying to eight years old. You're going to name my streets now. I want my stamp now. Okay. Yeah. I want my street name now. Don't don't wait until my kids are out there or my grandkids are out there for my statue to go up. I want to be standing next to my statue. And that should be all of us. Yeah. That should be all of us. I mean, I think it's an important point. Who's your hype woman if it's not your Baby! Right, right. We got to start training people how to treat us. Yeah. Really, we do. Right. 
we really have to start training people how to treat us by the way we treat ourselves. Do you get that just innately in you? Because no. it feels like an energy thing. Like, I mean, it takes a lot of energy. It takes, it gets exhausting. Feel like you have to be your own hype. It, it's exhausting, but, but girl, you know, one of my favorite scriptures says you have to encourage yourself. Mm-hmm. You have to encourage yourself. So, so you can get down. I heard Deion Sanders say, I've had a bad day. I had a bad moment. I had a bad experience, but I never had a bad day. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you can have a, a bad situation happen, but don't let it turn into a bad day. You know, you hear people all the time, I had a bad week. How in the hell did you have a bad week and you still breathing? You're yeah. not in the hospital. All your kids are still alive. Nobody stole your car overnight. Your yeah. ties were not deflated. Nobody came and said, knock, knock, hi, I'm uh, your ex-boyfriend and, and you owe me. What? <laughs> no. No, you can have a bad moment. We all do. It's not always rainbow and sparkles, but it's how you look at it and that's when you have to really rely on something other than yourself mm-hmm. you know I yeah. really have to rely on my faith girl I be in that closet crying I be in that girl even my kids though I was fussing the other day about something one of my kids was like mom why don't you just go in your prayer closet and breathe like six times and then come out and then yeah. maybe you'll feel better and you'll stop fussing uh, because I was in a whole different like Deion Sanders mm-hmm. said I was in a I had a bad situation or I had a bad mm-hmm. experience and I was letting that linger Mm-hmm. So by the time my kids came home from school, I was still in that bad s- mood. Yeah. I was like, no, nah, we're not going to take this to the eat. Yeah. Which I think so many of us tend to dwell on those negative oh! things in our lives. So what would you tell somebody who, you know, or how do you get people to change their mindset? Um, I, you, you, you just really have to flip a switch. It's like yeah. turn the light on. You know, if it's dark in here. You flip a switch. Mm-hmm. You physically have to flip. You can't just be like, you know, I wish it was some light in here. It yeah. is so dark. Oh, my God. Why is it so dark? I need some light. When there's a light switch and all you have to do is take your finger and flip it. And then there's the light. Be the light. Mm-hmm. Take your finger and flip it and switch it and make it light. Think about all of the things that you've accomplished and overcome. You know, think about all the things you have to look forward to. Think about all the plans and the goals that you have. You know, think about the thing that you did that was just against the odds that you actually achieved. And 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 let dwell on those things. You know, we have been so conditioned, ladies, to dwell on the negative. Oh yeah. my God. Oh yeah. I'm just this it's is society. horrible. Oh no, girl. Like, yeah. And, and then we us. make a little old stinking mistake and we dwell on that for three weeks, girl, and 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 miss out on opportunities. Yeah. Miss out. Okay, so let me tell you something. I haven't I told this to anybody. Leo, if you tell anybody this, I'm gonna fight you. <laughs> so I have not told this to anybody, but I got a chance to see Vice President Kamala Harris. Now, mm-hmm. regardless of what you think about politics, you get a chance to see the vice president, right. you going. Right. You are going, yeah. right? So I go and I have my speech perfected. I already know what I'm going to say because I practice, yeah. right? Yeah. I, I, I went to and got a Kamala Harris jacket. I got a Kamala Harris shirt. Uh, I'm hyping up people in the line. We take yeah. selfies and they get time to see Vice President Harris. I wanted to tell her about my business and my goal was that she was going to invite me to the White House because I was going to be an example of all the good things about her administration. And I was going to talk to her about my son Brandon's book, yeah. right? And she was going to laugh and we're going to talk to him. We're going to be best friends. She was going to invite me back. I had this all planned out of my mind and I saw her and I forgot everything I was yeah. going to say. <laughs> Forgot everything. And I, I don't know what I did. I don't even remember what happened. Yeah. It was a blur. And the next thing I know, girl, they was walking me out. I, I was like, but I didn't, I didn't get to say what I had yeah. wanted to say. And so I beat myself up for three days. Oh. I beat myself up. Because in my mind, this was my chance. Yeah. This was my chance to get my books read at the East Egg Row. This was yeah. my chance to let her know about my business so they could invite me to the White House to speak to everybody about, you know, all the good things they're doing and how they're impacting small businesses. And here's Shaletta Brandish. In my mind, girl, it was already happening. Yeah. yeah. And I, I didn't follow through with the plan that I had. Mm-hmm. Right. And so for three days, I was just so down. I was like, how, when am I going to get another chance like this? When am I going to get another opportunity like this? When is this going to come my way again? You know, if it, if it ever will. But I had to talk to my pastor and he was like, while you're dwelling on that, there's so many other things out there for you and you can't even go get them. There's so many new creative ideas that are coming to you. You can't even hear them because all you're doing is dwelling on this negative stuff. So you got to let it go. 
you got to let it go and, and believe that if God gave you that opportunity, you'll get another. Mm-hmm. And then if you mess up again, you'll just get another. Yeah. You know? Well, somehow we need to get her to listen to this podcast. Yeah. Then, is what you're saying. We're going we to we okay. dice it up. We're going to have Leo <laughs> chop it up. And then we're going to tag her. We're going to put like 60 seconds of that yeah. segment on. And we're we going to tag that. her. Yeah. That's what we're going to do. Leo? That's what we going to do. Leo got it. He got yeah. us. He got us. Any way that she didn't see your son's book, because that was such a big moment. Girl. Of bringing attention to something that was actually like, I mean, so theme of this podcast is being understood and um, something that for a lot of people was uh, dark. Yeah. Movies, the the let's, let's go Brandon. Brandon. Yeah. For yeah. other people, it was a rally cry, I guess. And you made this beautiful story uh, with Girl, your son. Girl, was that just the it best? Was so good. It was so okay. So I have to tell y'all the backstory. It's so needed. So yes, we were on vacation in Houston, Texas, in mm-hmm. our family's RV, and my son Brandon, one of the three autistic kids that I have, um, he's very fearful, stutters, um, and doesn't talk to people, but. All of a sudden in Texas, he was like going up to strange people. And he was like, hi, I'm Brandon. Thank you for being my fan. And I was like, what is wrong with you? Get away from these people. (laughs) And the people were looking at me like, what's wrong with him? I'm like, I'm so sorry. Just be nice to him. He's got autism. I'm sorry. It's okay. And so uh, he was, hi, I'm Brandon. I'm doing real good at school. Thanks for supporting me. And I was like, what is going on? And all of a sudden he's not fearful anymore. He's like jumping on his brother's hoverboard and he wants to get in the pool. And this is a boy who doesn't want to swim because he's afraid he's going to drown. He doesn't want to mm-hmm. bathe because he's afraid he's going to get sucked down in the drain and he will never talk to strangers. Yeah. And he's just like running off. And so instead of him being scared, now I'm scared. And so I said, son, What's what happening? is wrong with you? And he said, mama, these people love me here. I said, boy, these people don't know you. He said, mama, no, everybody here loves me. They have my signs everywhere. And I said, yeah. what are your signs? I don't see. Girl, so we were riding around in a golf cart the next day and he was like, mom stop the golf cart do you see my sign I said what sign he said it is said let's go Brandon girl girl he said mama you spot my sign I said baby I spot a book we about to make a million dollars get in the golf cart let's go and I called the publisher that day I was like we gotta make this book you right. know I know you're not crying no I'm not oh. I think it's so exciting <laughs> she better not be crying I we did cry what a beautiful story. I mean, it's just a really... It's really yeah. so... Story. It, and you know what? It is the power of a positive perspective. Yeah. Yes. Really, it is. Yes. Because at that moment, I could have been like, you know what? That's not what that means. Sit mm-hmm. down. Let me tell you what this means. I let it ride, ladies. Mm-hmm. I was like, yep, all these people are here to see you. And so he yeah. just really went into it, girl. He took a deep <laughs> dive in that. And he was just like loving on everybody. Everybody was loving on him. It just changed his whole mindset. I love it. And to think that he had that support, this boy stopped stuttering. And tested off the autism spectrum. Wow. That's incredible. Incredible. And that book single handedly took down the whole Let's Go Brandon slogan. CNN did a story. They were like a mom, a kid with autism, and a NASCAR driver took down the meaning of Let's Go Brandon. We were all CNN. And I didn't realize, and and that's the power of our creativity, our thoughts. I didn't call somebody and say, you know what, girl, this boy saw Let's Go Brandon. I should write a book. Yeah. Okay, talk to you later. Bye. Yeah. I called a publisher and I was like, we got to get a book done in four weeks. And she was like, that's not possible. I said, it's got to be possible. This all happened live on Twitter. Like, people can see the timeline. Yeah. It was yeah. a oh, real yeah. thing. It happened on March 7th, April 1st. We had a book. That's remarkable. There's also something in the power of you act on your ideas. And that is, um, you already said it, but I, I really think if there's something that can be for sure taken from this like don't delay don't when delay you have an idea that you think yeah. needs to come to the world and i think i mean so everybody can have their own beliefs i also believe that god puts ideas in he mind. does where you think they coming from we ain't that small you, got, you gotta act or you else gotta act gonna somebody go else, else is gonna do it and, mm-hmm. then, and then and you know what it's okay 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 so we're gonna break it all the way down yeah i believe that's where haters come in i never talk about haters yeah ever 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 but i believe that in our spirit 
when we start hating on other people, it's because it was something that we had that we knew we should have done yeah. or that we got the idea and we just didn't move on it. And somebody else did. Somebody was consistent. Somebody was faithful. Somebody acted on it. Somebody created some partnerships. Somebody put the seed money in and we sitting back and all of a sudden we see it. And we're like, oh, man, I had that idea. Oh, yeah. man, I should have done that. Or we we saw the sacrifice and we thought there's something that we should have done. There's mm -hmm. something that we should have created and something we could have created. And so instead of going to the next thing, we stuck right there. Yeah. And so every time we see that person, we frowned up. They don't even know we mad. Yeah. Every time we see that person, we can't even follow them. We unfollow them on social media because we don't want to know what they're doing next because it irritates our spirit. Well, because... We had an idea in our spirit and we didn't move. Yeah. And so the idea's got to come. Yeah. It's got to happen. It's got to be created. So if we don't have enough faith in ourselves and our potential and our abilities and our gifts to do it, somebody else will. And so that's why whenever God gives me something, girl, I take out running. People are like, you don't sleep. You must be exhausted. I'm not. I'm operating in my gift. I get good sleep. But as soon as the idea comes, it's a wrap. As soon as a book idea comes, mm -hmm. it's a wrap. As soon as a podcast idea comes, it's a wrap. I'm moving fast. And anybody in my circle has got to move fast too. Yeah. And it's, it's so important, you know, for us to get to our next level of greatness, we got to have people in our circle. Like you said, a cheerleader, mm -hmm. somebody who going to pray for us, somebody who going to encourage us, somebody who going to criticize us, somebody who going to love us, somebody who going to beat us up. We got to have all those different types of friends. Yeah. around us so that we can move and keep moving. Somebody who's going to push us. and say, You can't call somebody and say, oh my God, I cannot believe what happened with Kamala Harris. I did not tell her everything I wanted to say, so I didn't get invited to the White House. I was just a spectator like everybody else, and I know I'm not like everybody else. This moment was special. I, I created this moment. It, it, it was there just for me, and, and I knew what I was supposed to do, and I missed my assignment. So I'm disappointed in me. I feel like God is disappointed in me. And you need somebody to say, girl, get over that. Girl, mm -hmm. keep moving. Girl, okay, you had a moment. How long are you going to cry? How long are you going to whine about this? Because tomorrow, we're moving on. Right. Because right. tomorrow's a new idea. Tomorrow is a new connection. Tomorrow's a new creative outlet. But if you stuck right here, stuck on stupid, you're going to be there forever. And, and so many times, girl, it'll be months and years where we will be stuck. And that's a that's a, a tactic. Yeah, that's a that's a strategy that um, the enemy wants to keep us from getting to where we need to be. Right. I'm just going to keep reminding you of all your faults. I'm going to keep reminding you of your shortcomings. I'm going to make you so scared that you keep taking classes and you keep going to get PhDs and all these other degrees that you don't need to do what you need to do right now. Mm -hmm. Right. Because it sounds good. I'm getting my PhD. And everybody's like, oh, my gosh, she's getting a PhD. That's great. It's mm -hmm. not great. It's not great, Leo. You know why it's not great? Because it's delay tactic. Yeah. Cause you have you are complete right now to just go out. I remember when I got ready to start my company, uh, Shaletta Makes Me Laugh dot com. My podcast and that's a shameless plug. My <laughs> podcast and platform fun, and fun. promotions yeah, company way. right here in the Twin Cities, and we partnered together on so many projects. Thank y'all so much for believing in me when I first got started. Um, one of my first clients was y'all. Y'all trusted me with the messaging, and I just I'm forever grateful. Y'all have fed my family, and I can't thank y'all enough. But when we I love working, a girl, yes, I, yes. I love working Thank with y'all too. But when you know you you first start out, you just you don't know, right. you know what I mean. You don't know what you're gonna do. You don't know how it's gonna work out. And so I went to a class at one of these uh, organizations that help women own businesses, and they said if you come to the class for eight weeks, three times a week, two hours a day, at the end of the class, we're gonna give you five thousand dollars. And I remember sitting through one class. And I remember thinking, I don't want to wait eight weeks. Right. I don't want to wait another hour. And then I heard my spirit say, you think Tyler Perry thought, sat in a class? You think Tyler Perry waited eight weeks? Or do you think that when he got an idea, he just jumped up and started working? Yeah. And look where he is now. What you want to do? You want to wait eight weeks for these little funky $5,000? Or do you want to just get take out running? And I did not go back to another class. And they called. I was like, you don't want these $5,000? Oh, no. I didn't say I didn't want the $5,000. Yeah. Oh, yes. I do would like the $5,000. But I'm not going to wait eight weeks to start what I already know um, I should have started couple weeks ago so we're right. just gonna go ahead and jump out on faith and we're gonna do it and you know we're gonna mess up along the way we're gonna make mistakes those are learning curves it's not anything to stay it's a curve you don't stay mm -hmm. in a curve 
if you stay in the curve, you're going to get hit. You know, if you stay in that curve, that's when depression comes in. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if you stay in that curve, a curve is meant to just go through to the other side, right? Yeah. So you stay in that curve, that, girl, you're going to be sad. You're going to be lonely. You're going to be low. People going to be passing you by the curve. You're going to be like, why are they going through the curve? Because yeah. curve is not meant to be stayed in. Yeah. You're going to hit a curve. You're going to hit a bump on the road. You don't stay on that bump. Yeah. You go that bump might give you a flat tire. It might bust your transmission. It might make your muffler fall off. You don't stay there. You ride that raggedy car home. <laughs> you fix that tire. You you hook that muffler back up, yeah. right? And then you keep going. Why? Babies I, somebody was doing this on social said, said something about this on social media. Babies fall. But they get mm-hmm. up and keep walking. What is it about adults that when we fall, we can't get back up? Yeah. So I have a feeling a lot of people listening to this will be like, wow, yeah, I really should just go do this. Just do it. What is holding me back? But I think we tell ourselves so many excuses like, I don't have the money to do this. I don't have the time because I have to do my regular job. You got to have faith in you and believe in you. And you got to have some people around you. Yeah. You know, because you can't say, you know what, I don't have the money. And somebody else that you know say, girl, you know, you ain't got no money. Or somebody else, you know, you say, you know what, I have this great idea, but, you know, I, I don't know anything about how to put a business plan together. You sure don't. Nobody in your family's ever been in business. What, girl? Get out of my face. Yeah. You got to have somebody to say, you know what, girl, you don't know how to figure it out, but you can call somebody. I, one of my really good friends. Right? <laughs> girl, you too. Exactly. One of my really good friends, Marsha Carter, um, you know, when I was starting my business, um, she was like, what do you need? I said, I need an accountant and a lawyer and I need, a, what, what was it, a manager. Yeah. And she said, well, I can't do any of those things, but I want to help you however I can. Yeah. And so what she started doing, was she started showing up to my events and she would support me. Like she bring me water, mm-hmm. tea, cough drops, help me set up, help me break down to the point that now I don't even go. Like she'll go and represent me yeah. or she'll go and get everything set up, save me a space. I get mm-hmm. that. She shows me where to go. She was like, I got you. Yeah. And that's what we need. Yeah. So so we might not have an accountant. We might not have a business manager. We might not have a friend who is good with um, numbers and strategy. Mm-hmm. And, and that, but 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 we got to support each other in other ways so that, you know what, when I get there, you're going to help me. When I get there, somebody's already gone ahead of me to find out where I'm going to park, where I'm going to go. How do I change clothes? What, what's the seating arrangement like? So she can't do none of the stuff I needed, but she helped. Yeah. You know, and, and not just um, somebody helping us, but how are we showing up for our friends? Mm-hmm. I, I need people to think about that. Are you the friend that talks down the idea? Are you the friend that says it can't be done? Are you the friend that discourages your other friends. Um, Dr. Verna Price wrote a book, and I'm going to have to get it for y'all. Yeah. It's called um, The Power of People. She's local. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so you got yeah. to have her on the podcast. Yeah. She's amazing. Four types of people who would change your life. Dr. Verna breaks people down into four categories. Adders, subtractors, multipliers, and dividers. Right. So I said, I'm going to read The Power of People. Yeah. And everybody in my life who is a subtractor, or a divider, I'm going to kick them out. And I'm only keeping adders and multipliers. But mm. I don't know what these characteristics are, right? Yeah. So I'm going to let Dr. Verna, PhD, and her book, Power People, break it down for me. So I'm reading through the book, and I'm making notes like, Mm-mm, Kathy is a subtractor. She's got to go. <laughs> oh, Shanice. Nope. She is a divider. Yeah. She's got to go. Girl, I finished reading that book. You know what I realized? I was a subtractor. Oh, interesting. I'm the friend that's going to go over your house and say, girl, why is this floor not clean? And why are your yeah. kids not asleep? And why does this chicken have too much salt on it? This table is gritty. Why is your dog sleeping in your bed? Dogs don't sleep in beds. Don't go outside. Yeah. And then leave and think, we had so much fun. And then wonder why nobody's inviting me back. <laughs> I was the subtractor. I had no idea, but it's learned behavior. Yeah. So that book taught me how to be an adder. That book taught huh. me how to be a multiplier. Think, y'all been knowing me a long time. I ain't mm-hmm. always been this giving. I ain't always been this nice. I ain't always gone out of my way to try to bless other business owners the way I've done to the point where now I'm on the cover of the business magazine. Yeah. That was not my MO. I had to learn how to do that. But first I had to realize I was that friend. I was that negative friend who talked down ideas. Not because I didn't trust you or I didn't believe in you because I love you. 
Mm-hmm. But it's learned behavior. And as women, that's what we have learned to do because we don't want to get our friends disappointed. We don't want to get our hopes up. It might not happen. I don't want your spirit to be crushed. So yeah. I'm going to just talk you down. I'm going to talk, come on off the ledge. No, no, don't walk. Don't tightrope. You're not the walking with Linda's. You're not the flying with Linda's. Get off of that tightrope. Come down here with me. We're going to keep our feet on the ground because we've been hurt. We've been yeah. heartbroken. We've been let down. We didn't get the job. We didn't get the promotion. So we're not even going to try again. We're not going to do it no more because this is it. And I don't want my friend to be hurt. Nope. We're going to get up on that tightrope. And if we fall, we're going to pray there's a net down there. We're going to try to climb as high as we can. We're going to try to fly as high as we can. We're going to try to do as much as we can because this whole thing, ladies, has an expiration date. Yeah. Well, you bring up an important segue because another thing that you do so successfully is bring a voice to those who might not have one. And obviously your kids are um, a very important area of that that you have done very successfully. Mm -hmm. Um, But talk about that, about bringing other people along on this journey because the other podcasts that you help produce are other niches of areas right. where that information is important. You bring along other thought leaders. Right. Talk about the importance of helping be a catalyst for mm-hmm. those voices. Well, you know what I realized is well, in order for me to get to this next level of greatness, it's going to take partnerships. Yeah. It's going to take partnerships. It's going to take other people. You're not going to make a million dollars sitting in your house doing your podcast by yourself. You got to have some people. That you got to have a team of folks that you love, that love you, that are sold out for you. Um, you know, the, the podcasters that I have on my network for the first year, everybody worked for free. Yeah. Nobody asked me when we're going to get paid. Nobody said, I'm not doing this anymore because you don't have any money. We did those shows every week consistently and we never missed four years at seven o'clock on Wednesday, every Wednesday, the Jet Set and Divas record that show. On yeah. Tuesdays at 2, Coach Shea records her show at 2.30, Dr. Verna at 1 p.m. I know the schedule at what because it's been the same yeah. for four years. They have been consistent. And once we start making money, then, you know, we all get paid, right? Yeah. Yeah. But but it, it's so, so it's not about the money. It's about the heart. And so that's why I never worry about competing with people. You know, because since we got to be so successful now, you yeah. know, there's so many more podcasts um, out there, you know, from a communities of color, which we had a lock on for a while. Right. Mm-hmm. So now there are more podcasts with black hosts and Hispanic hosts and Hmong hosts. And, and so, I, you know, I was like, oh, they're taking my money. Yeah. I got competition. We got so much heart. Yeah. And, and, and I just believe in what we, what we are doing. And everybody on our team has so much heart so much soul and they put their heart and their soul into every episode so it's not just this is what we're doing and we're putting these things out there but when we finish we leave it all on the floor and you know with my kids um you know talking about autism it's so important that i show people who have special needs kids um what's possible Mm -hmm. you know because especially for autism is you know it's not um like they're blind Right. Or they have Down syndrome yeah. or um, they're paralyzed. You know, an, a child with autism could walk in here. You won't know it. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And so um, you get this diagnosis and then what? You know, they get, it's like somebody giving you the keys to an 18 wheeler and telling you if you could drive this 18 wheeler home, there's a million dollars in the bag and you can have it. It's in warrants. It's, you can have it. Well, you don't know how to drive an 18 wheeler. You're not going to get home. Right. So you had to leave it there. So they give you this diagnosis. They say your child has autism. You go home and now what? Yeah. What do you do? How do you how do you help your child? How can they be successful? Because I don't want them living with me forever, girl. I want my house back. I want to be an empty nester <laughs> one day. OK. And so I got to get these kids out of here. Right. And so now uh, what do I do? And, and I didn't have anybody to model. So I had to look at Holly Robinson Pete. She all the way in California. Mm-hmm. You know, I just had to follow her journey on social media and with her show and anywhere she was to show up. I would always make sure that I knew where it was. And if I could get there, try to get there. She was on TV. I made sure I tuned in because she had a child with autism. Yeah. And she was the only one talking about it. Everybody else was hiding. 
Because as moms, we think that if something's wrong with our kid, it reflects on us and we don't want to be judged. We don't want to ask anybody asking us if we were drinking while we were pregnant. Of course we were drinking. That's what you do. <laughs> uh, if we took our vitamins, we miss sometimes. That's what you do. You don't yeah. want to take them big giant pills every day. Um, you know, so we didn't want anybody judging us. Yeah. Saying, well, you must have done something. Something's wrong with your kid, right? So we hide. We don't talk about it. But but if you're talking about it, then you're providing information. You're providing awareness. You're making sure that people know what's going on. And then as my kids got successful, I could start telling people, hey, this is what you do. Go to ABA yeah. therapy. Get into daycare. You know, go to a special school, but then try to do a little mainstream and then make sure you got your circle so they can get some support and they make some friends and just all this stuff, right? And people were like, oh my God, look at what Shaletta's doing. I'm going to do that too. So then they start finding success. And and I'll have people tap me on the shoulder at church and they'll say, I brought my autistic daughter to church because I saw that you had your daughter at church. Yeah. You know, where Dave and Buster, a man came up to me. He was like, I just want to let you know my son is in here because I saw your social media post where you had your kids in here. Mm -hmm. You put on the noise canceling headphones. So we went out and bought noise canceling. Because this is it. It ain't somebody else did this already. We're not reinventing the wheel. Somebody's been through this, but they went through it in silence. Right. And so I'm going through it real loud. So nobody's seen this yet. Are you taking a picture of this, Leo? Nobody's <laughs> seen this shit. This is the brand new book that is not even available on Amazon yet, girl. So if it's not on Amazon, it's not real, right? It's right, just a right. figment of your imagination. This is the fourth book in the series of books about my four children. Andrew does his dance. It's all about my son, Andrew. And how he went viral shoveling snow and dancing during a winter storm. Now, he is the one child that I have that does not have autism. He's a teenager, so mm-hmm. it might be worse. But his three <laughs> younger siblings do have autism. Yeah. And so Andrew told me um, one day that I was so concerned about the children who could not talk that I forgot about the child who could. So I never oh, saw wow. him. Yeah. I never saw him. I was like, you know what? You can talk. You can feed yourself. Make your ramen. I got to get over here and get these kids out of Pampers. They five, yeah. six, and seven. I got to make sure I'm with the teachers. I got to get them to therapy. I got to get their IEP. I got to make sure the house is safe so that they won't escape in the lobe and go down here and get caught fa- uh, a, a face down in a, in a ravine somewhere. So you go mm. on, boy. You fine. Get on the bike. Go play with your friends. He did good in school. I didn't yeah. see it. He did bad in school. I didn't see it. He was good at home. I didn't see it. He was bad at home. I didn't see it because I was over here. But applauding every little thing that the autistic kids did. If they said a word or a sound, I was. we were clapping. We had a whole party. When they yeah. tested off the spectrum, we had a whole farewell to autism party. We had a low high. We had delays. Oh, wow. And we was doing the Hawaiian dances. Didn't see nothing Andrew was doing. Andrew got three jobs making straight A's. They see nothing Impressive. Andrew was doing. Nothing, right? So when yeah. it came time to write his book, he was like, Mama, I'm going to write my own book. Oh, oh I was like, gosh. oh, well, uh, I hope you're paying for it because <laughs> self-publishing is not uh, cheap. Yeah. He was like, Mama, I got it. I'm going to write my own book. And so his book is about how to support normal developing kids who have autistic siblings so y'all gotta take a look at the book it's amazing and so the back of the book the back of the book we have tips from a therapist who um who uh talks about how to support normal developing kids and we always do that on the last page of our books but this book is all about how to see those kids how to show up for them how to support them how to make sure that they know that they're not being left out and left behind they're getting penalized because they can talk. Yeah. Really? It's really? such an interesting perspective. Yes. And, and who th- who thinks of that other than a child who's already gone through yeah. it? So he's going to start a new conversation. We're going to New York. Lindsay Davis from Good Morning America is going to be interviewing him. Wow. Yes, honey. Yes. And I'm, I'm, I'm kind of jealous because I have three books and uh, nobody from Good Morning America um, <laughs> had me to fly to New York. So his book ain't even came out yet and he already got a New York trip. So I'm, I'm very shady about that uh, right now. You said so he's a teenager. He's How old? He's a teenager, 17. 17, oh my 17. gosh. So he smells like hot Cheetos and Takis. Right? <laughs> 
girl. So so I'm so excited about uh, oh, that's going great. to New York and um, him uh, interviewing with Lindsay Davis and you know the conversation that this book is going to start. Oh, for sure. Yeah. And when can people? April first, World 1st. Autism Day. Um, you can go to my website at shalettamakesmelaugh.com or you can go on Amazon. It'll be available everywhere books are sold. So Red Balloon. I always tell people um, support local bookstores. Yeah. You know, Stride Bookstore in Minneapolis, Red Balloon Bookstore in St. Paul, Gully Wobbles in Stillwater, uh, Moon Palace Books in Minneapolis. Uh, those bookstores carry all of the local authors. And it is so important that we physically walk in there and make a purchase. Yeah. No, that's great. Well, we all look forward to it coming out. So I'm pretty sure we'll all be buying a Yay! copy or two. Well, and it sounds like, I mean, I want to give you grace because when you talk about him noting that mm -hmm. your attention was elsewhere, you were surviving. Girl, yeah. he better be glad we all still alive. <laughs> yeah. Because it was some days, girl, I wanted to dress everybody in their Easter suit and get in a nine seater and drive off into <laughs> one of these 10,000 lakes. And I'm sure we can all say <laughs> the same. Did it. Baby. But it's pretty amazing how, I mean, it also is a test a testament to your job as a mom that he's able to write this story mm -hmm. in a way that is uplifting and a guide for other yeah. people as yeah. opposed to just being mad or oh, being yeah. upset about And you know that. what? I think, it, it, and we have to really take ownership and stock in this. Um, how are we showing up as, as moms? Yeah. You know, because that's how our kids are going to show up. You know, if you are uh, sad and depressed and upset all the time, that's how the kids are going to show up. If you take lemons and make lemonade, that's how the kids going to show up. Mm -hmm. it, it was like Brandon's book. When he saw that Let's Go Brandon flag, I could have sat him down and talked to him and told him the true meaning of this. And, and we could have squashed it and he would have gone back to stuttering. He would have gone back to being afraid and fearful. But I saw the impact and the positivity in it. And I was like, we're going to capitalize on this. Yeah. We're going to use this and we're going to ride this wave. And so th that's how the kids show up. The kids show up positive. The kids show up creative because I'm trying. You know, we all fall short. Yeah. But I'm trying to show up positive and creative. And one of the things that I, I hated COVID, but one of the things that I love most about it was COVID allowed us to give each other some grace. Yes. For sure. You know, we gave each other grace. We used to have to show up on time, have it all together, teeth brushed, hair comb, eyebrows plucked, armpits shaved, gargle, smell good, toes done. And COVID happened, girl. And we'd be like, oh, well, you ain't got your teeth brushed, girl. Come on. Uh, what? Yeah. Oh, you didn't uh, gargle? That's fine. Oh, your armpits are a little heavy. Girl, come on in here, girl. Don't worry about it. It's good. And, and, and now we can love each other better and differently. Yeah. You know, and not judge. And and I, I really appreciate that happening for us during COVID. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. You also got a chance to pause and say, why did it have to be? The, Girl, that come on. Yeah. I, said, I hope no, it feels a lot busier again now. I don't you've been busy the whole time, yeah. but having to run around and be places again. Um, but I try to carry forward some of those learnings because and yeah and y'all did it for me today because sure. I, I had down I'll show you my schedule I had down that I was supposed to be here at a certain time and I was like 20 minutes late and y'all just texted me hey girl take your time I'm like <laughs> but you know it, it was you know it used to be and we in media it used to be if yeah. you were five minutes late that's it oh no mm, we schedule we're not coming nope she was late I'm not having it my time is valuable and I'm not y'all was like girl you I good. remember those you remember days those Days. I remember those days oh. as a TV producer. You're already filling someone else's slot because they five Cause minutes late. They're five minutes late. You, you know, you already out. you already moved on to Plan B because I mean, especially live TV, you gotta mm -hmm. you gotta fill the time. So yeah, yeah so, it's so, so true. COVID has given us an opportunity to, like you said, take That's a true. pause and and allow uh, folks to have some grace yeah. and operate in grace. And I, I don't believe that as a as a country uh, before COVID. We had lost grace, yeah. you know, for people. Mm -hmm. I think we still have some work to do on that. Yeah, we do. Yes. We, we do. Yes. We do. We're all a work in progress, right? Yeah. This podcast is about being understood. What does that mean to you? Um, I don't. Someone who lives so authentic. Yeah. yeah. I, 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 I love that the podcast is about being understood. But this is the uh, my my uh, my friend said I have the spiritual gift of not caring. <laughs> 
I do. I really do. I yeah. sleep well. I, I have never cared about what anybody thinks about me because I know what I think about myself. Yeah. Um. And, and so and who really does matter. Right. It's who really not. does matter yeah. is me and Jesus over here, yeah. girl. We just yeah. It's me. And Je- I don't even care about them kids. What the kids think. Yeah. I care about what I think. Um. And and, and how I'm showing up for me. And yeah. How I'm showing up for um, my beliefs and my faith and and my God and my community and my family. I care about what I think. So I never care. So if folks um misunderstand what I say, I don't care. Yeah. I don't even spend any time with it. I promise you I don't. Somebody told me like two weeks ago, they were like, well, I misunderstood you. Girl, you know, I probably blocked that person. I didn't even know how to block an email. I had to Google it. I was like, how do you block an email? Because I don't care. You are taking yeah. time away from me. And one thing we cannot um, get back, ladies, is time. And so I'm very cautious and careful at all times about how I show up and how I spend my time and what I spend yeah. my time on. So I don't have time to help you understand what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. You have to take it for what it is. And if this is your party, come on over here. We're going to party. And if it's not your party, I'm not going to try to make you fall in love with me. I'm not going to try to make yeah. you like me. I'm not going to do anything to try to win you over. I show up and I am who I am. Yeah. And and I'm not everybody's cup of tea and I'm okay with that. I need us all to be okay with that. I need us all to be okay with understanding everybody's not going to like you. Yeah. Everybody, everybody's not going to like you. My best friend, Fanshawn, this is the funniest story. She uh, and I were on vacation and she was like, I want to bring one of my girlfriends. And I was like, okay, bring Akina. That's fine. Let's go. So Akina came and I just kind of rubbed Akina the wrong way because I was loud and brash and moving fast and talking crazy. And she went to my friend Fanshawn and she was like, I don't like Shaletta. And Fanshawn was like, I cannot believe you said that. Shaletta has treated us to this vacation. We don't have to pay any money for yeah. this. We are staying in a place that she provided. She's feeding us. She's getting us these tickets. We were at the Essence Music Festival. We in New Orleans. Yeah. I'm like, y'all come on. I got everybody. It's 12 of us in the house. This was before Airbnb. This is when you had to find somebody who would let you rent their house. You know, this was before they had the, mm-hmm. the marketplace. You had to go beg people. Can we stay in your house? We promise not to mess it up. And y'all had to make your own arrangements. Right? And so I can't Tina tells Fanshawn, I don't like Shaletta. I don't really like her. She's too loud. And Fanshawn was so put off because he, I, I'm treating all these people to a, a vacation. You know, where they ain't got to do nothing but show up and have a good time. And so Fanshawn came to me and she was so upset. And I was like, what's wrong? Yeah. And she didn't want to tell me at first because she's not negative. She know I'm not negative. And she said, Shaletta, Akina says she don't like you. And I said, girl, well, you know, it's okay because I'm hard to take. I'm not for everybody. Yeah. You know, if you ain't got a knife to cut this steak up, you can't eat it, girl. You can't go down here and, and eat this steak if you don't have a knife and a fork. I'm hard to take. I'm self-aware. And so if somebody doesn't like me, it is okay. Now, over time, I can't learn to like me and we're good friends and we we cool now. Yeah. But, but the first impression, she was not having it. It was just too much. It was too overwhelming, right? Mm-hmm. But I'm too much. And I'm okay with being too much. I feel like we need it. Real Housewives of Minnesota. Yes! <laughs> yes! I think so too. I think that would be bring great. Positivity to yes. 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 yes, 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 yes. And how could anyone not like you, girl? I but, mean, but the thing is, is that we um, have to learn how to show up for each other. Yeah. You know, and, and when you start talking about being understood, I have to be able to say, you know what? If you like to drink and smoke, I'm okay with you drinking and smoking. I'm not gonna try to change you. If you quiet and you're an introvert and you don't want to talk, I'm not gonna tell you take this microphone. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm loud, so don't ask me to dim my light or be quiet. I need to be understood means you understand me, but you don't try to change me. Right. You know what I mean? You don't try to make me into something that's going to be contrary to what what, what my gifts are. Don't ask me to be quiet if I'm a talker. Don't ask me to talk if if I'm an introvert. Don't ask me to go into a room if I have social anxiety and I don't really like people. Yeah. You know, we have to understand each other so that we can be adders and, 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 and multipliers instead of subtractors and dividers. Yeah. Yeah. So you've done a ton of great work in our community, but there's obviously still some gaps. Um, What do you think we all could be doing to help bridge some of those gaps in our community? I think you do them at two nine. Yeah. You know, when I started my company, um, I didn't know anybody. Yeah. I just know that I had a gift for promoting and marketing and um, I I wanted to help y'all advertise some of your clients and and y'all gave me contracts. Mm hmm. Y'all gave me an opportunity so that when I walk in a room, I said, well, you know, I work with Toonheim. That means something to people. 
Right. So that means if I'm working with Toonheim, I can be trusted. I've been vetted, right? On more than one occasion. So then that gets me in the door for some other opportunities that opens gates. Y'all are already doing the work. Y'all were doing the work before George Floyd died. You know, some people started doing the work after George Floyd died. Y'all have been doing the work. Well, you say, you know what? Shaletta's got a gift. Shaletta can uh, get the word out really well. Uh, she's got a, a really good market on certain demographics. And so if one of our clients needs to hit those demographics, we ought to call her. We got to bring her in. We're going to have her come in and consult on some other stuff, even if we don't hire her for this project. We got to go in a room, close the door, and say her name so that the walls, the barriers, they come down so that the gates that will close, now they're open. Just keep doing what you're doing. And if everybody else showed up like you, we would have more successful companies and and, and, and small black business owners like me um, won't be on the uh, food stamp line, uh, won't be closing down, won't be shutting our doors because we have the Toonheim helping us. No, they'll be on Twin Cities business. <laughs> yeah. you did yourself. I want to make sure that it does no, not make it sound no, like you were no, part of that. You we are, were. you are, you are. Because there's, there's no moving to the next step if I don't, first understand how this works i gotta understand how this business works ladies yeah. i'm a broadcaster i'm not a business owner right yeah. i'm, yes, I'm a well at the now time you, right yeah, at yeah, the time yeah. but you know i didn't even have a business account y'all didn't even, y'all couldn't even pay me i had to go get an ein i had to go get a business account no right yeah but, but but y'all helped me understand what it's supposed to look like yeah y'all gave me a tour of the facility i'm like oh Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. I, I get to see how y'all work. I get to see how y'all do stuff. I get to, I got to have somebody to model. Somebody's got to invite me. If y'all don't invite me in, I don't know. I'm yeah. still struggling. I'm still dog paddling, trying to tread water. I'm backstroking now, but don't say that you're not a part of it because it's the partnership that we created that got me here. Well, we, I appreciate I'm sure best is to Absolutely. hearing that because we appreciate you in that way. And I think those kind of partnerships are what make for the important connections mm-hmm. of connecting different objectives and ideas and having more holistic, thoughtful outcomes. Yeah. And yeah. so that warms my heart to know that it was Girl, impactful I, I to like you, to you because people, it's impactful for us. Y'all feed my family. Yeah. You know, y'all y'all feed my family. Y'all feed the podcasters' families. Y'all help me to build this business up. Um, you know, and, and again, that gets me in the door. Yeah. You know, I, who, who, who you work with? Tune on. Oh, well. Come on in. Yeah. That yeah. means something, girl, for real. Yeah. What would you say to somebody who doesn't have those types of connections and is just starting out? What advice would you have for them? Start making connections. Yeah. You got to be aggressive out here. Yeah. You got to start calling people. You got to pick up the phone and Google and call and say, I want to talk to you. I still do that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I still do that. I want to go to lunch with you. And people say, I don't have any business right now. I don't need your business. I need your relationship yeah Yeah. i need you to talk to me i need you to know about me and my kids and my family and my business and i need to know about you and your kids and your family and business because y'all know as well as i do it's not about the business it's about the relationship oh definitely so important yeah because when i saw y'all was doing a podcast what i do what uh, y'all yes (laughs) y'all doing a podcast without me i want to be a guest when can we get together you know so i'm still doing that we got to we really got to be hungry because it's not going to fall in our laps. Yeah. And it looks like for some people, it looks like it falls in their lap, but it, it doesn't. It's hard work yeah. all, all the way around. Mm-hmm. Are memes one of your love languages? Because I especially, I mean, a lot of our friendship was born on also Twitter. Media, and thank yeah. you to the memes. You make me laugh. <laughs> you make me giggle. Like oh, Those are the same thing. <laughs> Smile, whatever those things are from the awesome memes that you respond to things yes. with it brings a lot of the energy yes. of you through a social media post which I is- love social media I tell people all the time social media is the great equalizer it really is and yeah. that's why you know when, when Zuckerberg and Elon Musk start tinkering with the social media platforms and they start talking about canceling TikTok um, it is really um, not allowing us to level the playing fields Right. So I remember before, you know, social media really got popping. I used to go to a TV station and say, can y'all do a story about this? Because my kids have autism and I really Mm want to get the word out about one thing or another. No, not today. 
call a radio station. Hey, can we talk about this? Not today. Yeah. Call a newspaper. You got time? Not today. Well, guess what? I can get on social media and talk about it and get more responses yeah. than if I would have gone in the Star Tribune or the Pioneer Press. And, you know, quiet is kept. There are a lot of our local reporters who send me the DM and be like, can you amplify this post for me? Can you retweet yeah. this? Can you repost this? Can you like and make a comment or share this? Because they know my followers are going to respond. Oh, yeah. 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 So social media is a great equalizer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Most certainly. Yeah. So obviously a lot of your life is public. So mm-hmm. not a lot about you. But what is something that we don't know about you? I eat raw meat. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> My ex-husband is trying to get me from doing that right now, girl. Like, if he seasons chicken to cook, yeah. I will eat a, ch- a raw chicken. Oh, no. Like a caveman, girl. <laughs> uh, you know, if he seasons a steak to cook, I will go eat the raw steak. That's oh crazy. Is that crazy? I that eat is, raw That is crazy. He has to stop me. He's like, girl, you can get salmonella poisoning. Yeah. You can get sick and die. And I was like, I know, but it just looks so good. So, like, if he's cooking, because yeah. he does, he's to cook, he will cook during the day. Yeah. To keep me from <laughs> eating the wrong Being meat. Excited. Yeah. But you yeah. haven't gotten sick yet. I have not. Thank you, Lord. I have oh. not gotten sick yet. Because, I mean, I take a whole chicken thigh season. And just oh, my gosh. A whole chicken thigh. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. That's I crazy. have questions, but I'll hold them. <laughs> <laughs> We so appreciate you well, talking so with you us go. and this time with Biden us. Yes. I feel like there were threads in this conversation that are going to be so meaningful to a lot of people. And in fact, I believe all things happen at the time that they're supposed to. I feel like some of this was a pep talk to me, too, well, that I, I needed to hear. Way. And so I'm grateful. Thank you well, I'm for joining for us. Yes, thank you. Okay, we have to do the plugs about all the things okay, for all the things. Andrew's book, Andrew Does His Dance, will be available everywhere books are sold April 1st for World Autism Day. So if you're an autism mom, teacher, special education, para uh, at your church, uh, child care center or daycare, get a copy of this book. Make sure we uh, support our local bookstores here. But, you know, it's so easy. Amazon has just spoiled us, girl. They just click, click, and then it shows up at the house. I know. I know it's hard. So it's on Amazon, too, for those of you who don't want to get in the car. Um, Shaletta makes me laugh.com is my multimedia um, podcasting promotions production and publishing company uh, we've got 10 weekly podcasts all hosted by black subject experts um, and then you know we work with uh, different organizations in town like Toonheim uh, to promote uh, what's going on in community to uh, especially communities of color to autism moms and dads to small mm-hmm. business owners and then you know just out here making a difference girl trying to trying to do right and be right you're doing and great. Got to get the April um, edition of Twin Cities Business. Yes, yes. I'm going to be on the, the cover. The cover looks like there's a lot Girl. of good content in yep. addition to needing is to the cover get just the best? I, I said great. they probably never had a cover that looked like that. I bet they never did. Because, you know, usually when you have a business person there, cross their hands. Yeah. They look at the camera. I'm sure that their photographer had fun with you. Girl, we had a blast because we was playing Michael Jackson music. Oh, you had better. We were playing, we playing all Michael Jackson, Mary J. Blige. And because we were outside, it yeah. was very cold. I was like, dude, if you want me to move, you got to play some Michael Jackson and some Mary J. Blige. And so we were dancing. We were having a good time. So we, we had fun. It was right outside the steps of the Capitol, right before the Black Entrepreneurs Day event yeah. that I host. So. Which, congratulations yes. on that. Thank you. Did you see all the beautiful black people oh, at the yeah. Capitol, yes. girl? Yes. 500 folks. Wonderful. 500 Yeah, I said girl. some things that you do make me tear up. That one did, because I saw that and oh, I was yeah. like, of course Shaletta did that. And why didn't this exist before? before. And yep. why did you have to do it? But also, like, thank God you did. And those are the types of um, impacts that you make. And thank that was girl. really neat. So thank congrats. You, Very powerful. So thank you for everything thank you do. You. Yes. Thank you all for having me. Yes.